Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering the death of the Punisher. Woke Marvel Comics has decided to kill the Punisher due to its problematic conservative fan base. They just don't like the kind of people that like the character of the Punisher, a character created decades ago in the 1970s in an issue of Amazing Spider-Man and later building its own tremendous following after it got its own series in the 1980s. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. I'm trying to get to 25,000 subscribers, so if you can subscribe, please do subscribe. Thank you for that. Coming from Zero Hedge, Woke Marvel eliminates the Punisher due to problematic conservative fan base. A year ago, progressive news outlets we're calling the idea of a culture war a right-wing conspiracy theory. Makes you wonder about everything they do call conspiracy theories. They said it had no basis in reality, yet the injection of far-left politics into entertainment media had already started years previous with noticeable propaganda efforts in movies, streaming television, children's shows, and books. Even commercial advertising was replete with progressive ideological imagery by 2016 onward. The goal is obvious, to erase competing ideals and viewpoints while saturating the market with only one political vision, a woke vision. It's called social engineering, and anyone who claims this is not happening in the US today is gaslighting. I'd also like to always mention this film, The Century of the Self. I'll make sure there's a link to it in the description of this video. It's a four hour documentary by Adam Curtis, a journalist from the BBC, and he explains how Americans were propagandized into becoming consumers, mass consumers of things. It was a huge social engineering effort, and you will absolutely see the similarities between what they did with consumerism with Century of the Self and what they're doing with all of this woke entertainment and woke mass saturation in every possible area of society today. It's not a good thing, it doesn't lead to good things. Strangely, the American comic book industry has become a major battleground in the culture war, with heroic symbols being increasingly erased or hijacked as vehicles for woke talking points. A vast array of comic book characters are now race swapped, converted to LGBT, or have had their histories rewritten to make them more acceptable for modern audiences. At the same time, they promote everything from Black Lives Matter to climate change propaganda, to gender identity politics and anti-gun messaging. Why would leftists target something as frivolous as comic book heroes? Because pop culture is first and foremost a playground where children grow up, and by rewriting heroes as social justice crusaders and communists, they hope to indoctrinate the next generation, poison as many minds as possible, and poison them as young as possible. However, one hero figure in particular is seen as so egregious and so triggering that leftists want him memory hold altogether, the Punisher. The Punisher's character, Frank Castle, originally created by writer Jerry Conway in 1974 with artists Ross Andrew and John Romita, was a product of a chaotic era, a reaction to the rise of war, stagflation, instability, and exploding crime rates in the U.S. The Punisher story is a tragedy of a returning military veteran whose family is killed during what seems to be a gangland hit. With federal agencies doing little to arrest the perpetrators, Castle takes matters into his own hands and begins systematically assassinating the criminals. The concept of citizen crime stopping and vigilanteism was becoming popular in the cultural zeitgeist in the 1970s, with many people living in metropolitan areas dealing with increasing criminal violence and unreliable government protection. City governments in places like New York were actively restricting gun rights for law-abiding people, which only made things easier for criminals. You might notice the same exact conditions are returning to the U.S. today, and debate is boiling once again on vigilantes. Just look at the media fury over Kyle Rittenhouse or Daniel Penny. The mainstream left is adamantly opposed to any form of civilian intervention unless it's Antifa or Black Lives Matter, while also being adamantly opposed to any intervention by police, 
In other words, they want to let criminals run wild and then threaten to prosecute anyone who dares to do anything about it. The Punisher, as an icon, has been highly popular among conservatives, military veterans, and law enforcement officers in recent years. The trademark skull symbol can be found everywhere with patches, gear, and flags supporting the image, often as a representation of citizens taking matters into their own hands. The symbol was also seen at the January 6th protests. This has made leftists at Marvel livid. They first attempted to make a fundamental change to the character, including a redesign of his popular skull symbol, which, you know, came out ridiculous. It just looked, you know, silly and demonic, you know, just not compelling or interesting. You know, look at him here. What is that? A devil head? They also took away his guns and gave him swords in 2021. Instead of fighting against criminal organizations, Frank Castle, the Punisher, joins with one, violating his fundamental code of ethics. This month, though, Marvel officially declared the Punisher persona non grata, eliminating the character as readers know him. Did he go out in a blaze of glory? No, in typical woke fashion, Frank Castle is captured by progressive heroes, chained up and forced to go through a struggle session just like they do in communist countries. Google the term struggle session if you're not familiar with it, in which he is admonished as a murderer and a terrorist. Marvel even brings the Punisher's wife back from the dead only so that she can divorce him and take his money and property and then inform him that his lifelong crusade against the criminal underworld was all for nothing. The character then dies from an apparent suicide, but the story itself is left open for his return just not as the gun-toting hero people know and love. Marvel writers, including original Punisher creator Jerry Conway, specifically cite the popularity of the character among conservatives as the reason for his virtual elimination. As Newsweek noted, the Punisher was a problematic character for Marvel because conservatives liked him too much. He represents the everyman. He has no superpowers. He's not a billionaire like Batman, but he still fights evil with an immovable will and lots of guns. The co-option and erasure of popular heroes or anti-heroes in the case of the Punisher is representative of a disturbing politicization of our times. Much like the cultural revolution in China, leftist movements in America are systematically tearing down all opposing beliefs from our cultural catalog. And this includes any positive representation of vigilantism. They openly admit why they are doing it, conservatives aren't allowed to be the good guys. They aren't allowed to have heroes. Meaning, if the Punisher was a leftist icon, Marvel would have no problem with him whatsoever. I do think things will ultimately turn around at Disney, but that doesn't mean I would say to go out and support them. I always say, support the companies that support you. Support the products that you like. Don't support the things that you don't like. And don't give money to people that you don't think deserve it. Let me know what you think of all this. In the comments below, did you know that Marvel has decided to kill the Punisher? And did you know the reason why they decided to kill the Punisher? He's not woke at all. They tried to woke him up. It just didn't work. And definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Really appreciate you guys. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.